So let's talk about embodied emissions. This refers to greenhouse gases. The word embodied refers to a specific category of carbon emissions, those generated over the whole life cycle of a good or service. When we're talking about the construction industry, embodied emissions refers to those created by the manufacturing of the building's materials, their transportation, their assembly, their maintenance and disposal. In other words, these carbon emissions come from everything except those created by the building's use. So, practically speaking, what's behind the term embodied emissions? And how is this idea reinventing the world of tomorrow? I'm James. And I'm Amy. Together, let's decode the ideas that are shaping the future of sustainable construction. Constructing New Worlds by Saint-Gobain. Behind words, solutions, and innovations for a sustainable future. This expression, embodied emissions, came in addition to the expression, operational emissions. And it's related to the greenhouse gases produced during a building's use. However, industry professionals and manufacturers have had to widen their approach to reach carbon neutrality. They've started looking more closely at how products and materials can also be more cost-effective in terms of carbon dioxide. This makes embodied emissions a critical measurement for new construction and extensive renovation projects. Yeah, you really have a point there about the embodied emissions. It's true that it's pretty complicated to carry out. Some raw materials are really rare and come from different places worldwide. Yeah, well, that's complicated, but things are starting to get organized in the construction industry. Many countries now use environmental product labels to display the amount of embodied emissions associated with a product's manufacture. But not all materials are using these labels yet, far from it, and only certain countries have laws requiring them. You know, in practical terms, calculating a building's carbon emissions throughout its life cycle is becoming more manageable and even precise. It's being carried out according to international standards and adopted by more and more businesses. A free calculator has even been available in the United States for a few years now to calculate embodied carbon, called the Embodied Carbon in Construction Calculator, the EC3. It was created by the Carbon Leadership Forum with the contribution of nearly 50 industry partners. And other calculators exist, too. Oh, cool. What are these calculations for? Well, they allow designers to make better choices regarding which material or process to use over another. Engineers and architects use this knowledge to imagine the best possible scenario based on a project's initial context. One person who's been talking about this for about 20 years already is British architect Simon Sturgis. Oh, right. The one who wrote the book Targeting Zero. Exactly. That's him. He's one of the frontrunners setting up new practices based on buildings' entire life cycles. He's worked with LETI, the London Energy Transformation Initiative, a professional network based in the UK. These case studies highlight certain principles, notably the reuse of existing buildings, the design of more energy-efficient solutions for materials, and even the use of bio-based materials, such as wood. Among some of the best cases they cite, an example is the renovation of the famous New Bodleian Library in Oxford, whose 77-year-old anodized aluminum windows were reused. Oh, okay, so behind the idea of reducing embodied emissions is also the idea of considering existing buildings as material stockpiles whose resources should be reused as long as possible. That's exactly right. And when reuse or recycling isn't possible, you have to use products with a small carbon footprint and optimize the use of materials with high embodied emissions, such as concrete or steel. But even concrete or steel can have heavier or lighter embodied carbon footprints depending on their manufacturing methods, right? Mm -hmm. Is it possible to make concrete that emits fewer greenhouse gases, for example? Well, there are some innovations in this field, such as low emissions concrete, because traditional concrete contains cement, which emits a lot of CO2. So the carbon cost of building materials needs to be better calculated, optimized and reduced, especially for those producing the most emissions. To reduce the construction industry's environmental footprint, the industry has to play both sides of the fence by reducing both operational and embodied emissions. Making the right choices can significantly reduce the global impact of greenhouse gases emitted over a building's entire life cycle. Constructing New Worlds by Saint-Gobain. Behind words, solutions, and innovations for a sustainable future.